Hey class, and welcome to lesson 11.1, .1, Polygons. Let's take a look at our essential question for today's lesson. How can you identify and classify polygons? Well, let's begin by taking a look at our word problem. So let's jump down underneath, unlock the problem. The Castel di Monte in Aquila, Italy was built more than 750 years ago. The fortress has one central building with eight surrounding towers. Which polygon do you see repeated in the structure? How many sides, angles, and vertices does this polygon have? Well, let's begin by remembering what a polygon is. And that is, a polygon is a closed plane figure formed by three or more line segments that meet at points called vertices. That's kind of important, so let's go ahead and underline that word. It is named by the number of sides and angles it has. To identify the repeated polygon in the fortress, complete the table below. So now, let's jump down and take a look at our table. And going across the top of our table, we see different polygons. Because we have a triangle, which does have three or more line segments that meet at point called vertices. We have a quadrilateral, we have a pentagon, and we have a hexagon. So with our triangle, we know that our triangle has one, two, three sides. Our quadrilateral has one, two, three, four sides. Our pentagon has one, two, three, four, five sides. So let's see what our hexagon has. Our hexagon has one, two, three, four, five, six. So underneath our hexagon for sides, we would put six. Now, it's looking at angles. So if we have three sides, we are also going to have three angles. Our quadrilateral is going to have four angles. Our pentagon has five sides and five angles. And our hexagon has, let's take a look at it, has one, two, three, four, five, six. It also has six angles. So now the vertices. If we have three sides, three angles, we are also going to have three vertices. Our quadrilateral is going to have four sides, four angles, four vertices. Our pentagon is going to have five sides, five angles, and five vertices. Our hexagon is going to have six sides, six angles, and six vertices. So what if we keep going? Because we do have polygons with more than six sides. So let's kind of take a look at those. So underneath our next chart, we have a heptagon. Now, how many sides does a heptagon have? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it does have seven sides. So if it has seven sides, our heptagon is also going to have seven angles and seven vertices. Now, our octagon has eight sides. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if our octagon has eight sides, it's also going to have eight angles and eight vertices. Now something you're not going to hear very often, and that's both of these, the heptagon, but the norgon. The norgon is something you're not going to hear very often. But let's see how many sides a norgon has. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a norgon has nine sides, and if it has nine sides, and I'm sorry, I keep pronouncing it wrong. It's a nonagon. If it has nine sides, it's also going to have nine angles and nine vertices. And then last week, we have a decagon. And the way that I remember this one is with the beginning of dec. Dec means like for decade. We know that decade means 10 years. Um, so with a decagon, it's going to have 10 sides, and if it has 10 sides, it's going to have 10 angles and 10 vertices. So, when we identify these and we look back up at our figure, our picture up here, 
we can see that the octagon is the repeated polygon in the Castel de Monte because it has eight sides and eight angles and eight vertices. So if we look at our picture, let's just identify it. We see an octagon here, an octagon here, an octagon here, 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 here. We also see an octagon here, and we see another one if we looked really closely in here. So it's basically made up of all octagons. Okay, let's take a little bit further look and let's look at our regular polygons. When line segments have the same length or when angles have the same measure, they are congruent. And that's going to be a key word to remember, congruent. In a regular polygon, all sides are congruent and all angles are congruent. Let's take another look at that. When line segments have the same length or when angles have the same measure, they are congruent. In a regular polygon, all sides are congruent and all angles are congruent. So over here on our left, we have our regular polygons where all sides are congruent, all angles are congruent, and you can write measurements to show congruent sides and angles. And as you can see, all of our sides are the same. All of our sides are four centimeters and all of our angles are 108 degrees. Now, in a not a regular polygon, not all sides are congruent, which means they're not all the same, and not all angles are congruent, which means they don't all have the same amount of degrees. So you can use the same markings to show the congruent sides and angles. So remember, regular polygons, all sides are congruent, all angles are congruent. Not a regular polygon, not all sides are congruent, not all angles are congruent. So now let's jump down here to our Venn diagram. It says to label the Venn diagram to classify the polygons in each group. Then draw a polygon that belongs only to each group. So congruent, we could have angles on this side. And on this side, congruent sides. So, one that we could possibly draw on our for congruent angles is a rectangle. Because it does have congruent angles, all angles are 90 degrees, but it does not have congruent sides as two are longer than the opposite pair. Uh, over here for congruent sides, we could draw a plus sign. Now mine's going to be a little cheesy. So it does have all congruent sides. It should have. I know mine looks pretty bad, but ignore the way mine done. If you'd have drawn it perfectly, it would have had all congruent sides, but not necessarily all congruent angles. Now, remember the ones that go in the middle, and these would be considered the regular polygons. So anything in the middle is going to have both congruent angles and congruent sides. So our regular polygons go in the middle. And right now we have a triangle with all equal sides and all equal angles, a square with all equal sides and all equal angles, and then we're also going to have a pentagon. But our pentagon has to be careful. And again, mine's not going to be perfect since I'm drawing it on here. And, but that's one of the options that we would have. Of course, ignore my drawing because it's really not that good. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today's lesson. Make sure that you have copied the vocabulary from today's lesson, including congruent and regular polygons, into your math journals and bring it with you to class tomorrow because those are going to be very important as we go throughout this entire unit on geometry. Until then, I will see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.